I think we have to accept the, me the minutes from uh, the last meeting. Okay. Are there any yeah. Um, I make a motion that we accept the minutes from, I don't remember the date, from the um, October meeting. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Arbor Day update. Uh, who has that? Is that I, to you? I didn't. I didn't know we were making any plans for Arbor Day yet. I don't. I don't have an update. Someone's coming. It might be Matt. He might have an update. Okay. Does he also have the update on the farmers market? He would have the update on the farmers yeah. market too. Okay. Who has the neighborhood outreach grants? Well, you know the the conservation commission members that wanted to talk are here. Maybe we should okay come to them first. Yeah. Uh, do you know if any more of you folks are going to come to this thing tonight, or is it just the three of you? Okay. Do with a quorum. It's posted. Yeah, you posted it. Yeah. yeah. So I can I can start with some background and Sally or anyone jump in. So on Conservation Commission site visits, we are seeing a good amount of emerald ash borer in the um, hemlock trees around the bowl. No, and uh, the Willie Adelgid, I'm sorry. And uh, some of the ash trees are also infected with the emerald ash borer. So we're trying to be proactive and we thought it would be a good idea to bring it to this commission to at least to at least start to make people aware, um, see if people have suggestions. I had some thoughts in mind, um, see if people had suggestions about what we would like to do about that. And to keep in mind, this is an advisory commission. We have no jurisdiction. Sure. Um, I have a suggestion. Yep. For you know, at least eight years or so, um, I've heard uh, the subject of a tree inventory for the town brought up, and uh, you know, you could maybe narrow that to an inventory of hemlocks or ash trees. They used to always run it past Peter Curtin when he was the tree uh, warden. But, um, you know, the, the, the salary for that position is like $3,000. So nobody's going right. to take it in addition to, you know, cleaning up limbs and stuff. Right. It's just not going to happen. So uh, anyway, uh, I didn't know if that could tie in with something. If you know how many you have, you can figure things like the rate of infection. You know, it gives you like a base number to work for work from. What we, researching the problem. What we did at Ice Glen mm -hmm. was a forester was hired that inventoried the Glen and, and the um, yeah. oh. hemlock trees there and did a assessment of the severity of infestation and then treatment. Um, um, hemlocks were treated. The ones that were the most severely infected have been treated and some of the some of the yeah. moderately infected. But that's town property. Right. You know, they, this is private property. Which did is, they inventory all the species or just the... They did the, um, the ash the and the hemlocks. Yeah, hemlocks and the ash. They see yeah. basically the species that were under attack. Sure, of course. Yeah. That seems like a massive undertaking. Well, yeah, I just, you know... <laughs> I know, I mean, <laughs> ice plant is nine, nine acres and... Yeah. You know, so now what I mean, if you were going to inventory the entire town... How many trees did massive. you come up with on that? 350 something. So that's fewer than I thought. You know, the, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, well, you could combine it with uh, you know, education of people on the ball to get people to report their own figures. Right. Wouldn't be quite as reliable, but you know, you would at least educate them on what to look for and yeah. make them aware of the problem. That, that's along the lines of what I was thinking to, to start with some education um, to the Stockbridge Bowl Association. Mm -hmm. And my, my concern is because it's on the bowl. I don't know that we want spray any kind of spray treatment on the bowl. Um, I don't think we do. 
But again, it's private property. You know, it's private been property. recommended against doing that next to the lake. Yeah. yeah. But, I, but what, I, what I was thinking was to provide some education to encourage people to at least start to assess their trees, see if see if they're infected with either either of the pathogens, um, and and encourage plantings. You know, uh, some some education along the lines of if this tree is heavily infested and you're going to lose it in five years, let's start thinking about what you can plant there so that we don't. I think the concern of the commission is that a lot of trees on the bowl were going to be lost. Um, oh, there will be. It's, they will be. They will be. So the to landscape, if if it goes on without any planning, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think that we, as the conservation commission, are requiring at least a one-to-one -one replanting. If you take down a dead tree, I think people need to understand that they can't just go and take down a dead tree mm -hmm. close to the water. Um, within 150 feet of the water without coming to us. And even so, if you're taking down a massive, you know, mature tree, what you're planting isn't going to mm -hmm. fix that anytime soon. I mean, they've been growing for, I don't know, 50, 100 years already. Right. And, you know, it's going to take that long for any new plantings to reach maturity. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do that, we're risking losing the bank due to erosion. We're risking, um, uh, I mean, the fact that the climate is getting warmer and warmer and warmer, that if we start taking down trees, the shading effects of those mature trees is going to be lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the habitat. Um, and, and that's, I, I don't know what's going to, if we continue to have weather like we've had this year, which we probably won't have it like this, because this is really, I think, an anomaly. But but even so, I think it's been predicted that this is what we're going to see in 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole, uh, the whole heating and cooling of the lake is going to change for sure. And without the mature trees to protect it, it's going to be catastrophic. I think we're I think we're really looking at um, a good chance of cyanobacterial um, outbreaks more and more. Um, it's it's really a huge deal mm -hmm. right now. Well, you know, getting back to the, the inventory um, because I do think it's it's always useful to have the numbers for things. Um, you know, we go on a lot of visits at the bowl where, you know, uh, what did you estimate? Maybe 60, 70% at yeah, least of our, oh, easy. of our business is at the bowl. Yeah. So we're on that land anyway. You know, I mean, if we took, you know, while we were there in a site visit. Well, our engineers very often do at least some inventory yeah. in their planning. I mean, it gives us, we have an opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. And we could cooperate with your uh, commission. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just kind of- Yeah, sure. I mean, I look, every time we go out, I look at the hemlocks right. where we are. Sure. I see the adeldrids every time we go. Yeah. You know, not, I don't see as many ash trees to assess, but I always see the adeldrid. Um, but even still, even, you know, we do have a good deal of information in what we put on our plans in terms of right. the trees that are there because usually we've been- Usually what they want to cut down. Yeah, usually. usually what they want to cut but down. But we've been asking them for um, an inventory of anything that's greater than four inches. Mm -hmm. So if we have those plans that are detailed with anything greater than four inches, that's probably some a place to start, but again, you got to have somebody to pull that information all together. If, if we have me, in terms of an inventory, I, I attended a online UMass forestry noon seminar, and they actually had combined, <clears throat> I forget the two programs, one of them was Google Earth, and the other one was the streets. So you had the streets with images of the trees. You could start with that. 
if you if I'm not that technologically uh, <clears throat> endowed, but if somebody did that, then that would be a start. And you could put, as you went around, you could put uh, your information on something like that. And it would be, uh, you know, we could, the, the trees on the streets in town, we could do a walkthrough with not mm -hmm. much effort. Was it high tree, Eric, do you know? I don't know. I did okay. not. I did not uh, write it down, but it's available apparently for free. I, I think it's. I think it's the government. Massachusetts does something like that. It could be. I think. I think DCR might yeah. do it also. That they would come out and um, I, I've seen it. We did it in Great Barrington with I Tree, and then you just walk up to the trees and they tell you. You know what it is. Oh well, okay. This this was a a, a map. This is a map where you could actually identify the tree. Okay, so from aerial photography. Exactly. That's where Google Earth was involved. Okay. This time of year, with the foliage off, you got to be able to tell the evergreens from everything else. Right. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. may you may be able to identify the pines from the yeah the spruce and the hemlock. The hemlock. <laughs> also, if there probably is a systemic that can be used to treat these trees. I'm not sure, but there may be. Because uh, elm trees, of course, I don't know if you've seen it done, but they have the little the injection injection type things. They dig around the root base and put these in. That would be preferable to trying to spray anything around the bowl. Oh, no. It's an injection. The dinotefron is what most... It's most of what we use in ice climb. And it may or may not be cheaper to do that for the homeowner than to pay for the price of the tree removal and then the replant. You might be able to sell it that way. Think about it. We're doing, we're, we started doing injection of the trees at ice climb. Um, it's not, it's not a permanent solution, unfortunately. It's, no, it's none of this is, it's going to be. Yeah. And it's not cheap. And the injection is. By yearly or yearly or tri yearly. Uh, what's the. What, what, Dyna tephra. Yeah. I, I, I know I have it. It's, I I'd have to look up the spelling. I don't. Oh, yeah. To Ron's point, I mean, it's probably 1200 $1, to $1,500 to have a big tree taken down. Or more, yeah, on that's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not advocating and then know, three to five hundred dollars to get something planted. So, yeah, so it's it's a major, it's going to be a major expense. Um, if it's if it gets as bad as we think it's going to, and do you know, like I know, often people want to re replace the, the mature trees with something small or sapling or a, or yeah, a shrub and places it's not going to... There, you just can't get anything but, large in through, into the spaces. But actually, you know, something eight feet or under very often will grow, within five years, will outgrow the larger species because it doesn't suffer anywhere near the transplant. Shot. Oh yeah, no smaller. You know what I mean? I, I've, I've yeah, experimented with that, with that in my own yard. Yep. You know, I bought it like a twelve-foot um, hornbeam from Winter Hill, and you know, uh, like a uh, four-foot sassafras, and the sassafras is now almost eighteen feet high, mm -hmm. and the hornbeam it's eh, maybe sixteen feet. You know? mm -hmm. So I mean, economically. I know there's a place in um, there's a place in Amherst that, that wholesales trees, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I've just discovered a place called Mustard Forest in Pennsylvania. They're excellent. Mm -hmm. and buying like lining up stock, but I mean the stuff grows mm -hmm. fast. So. Well, we also have as a resource the yeah. Keystone program that the state puts on the forestry. Um, Seminars at the Harvard Forest, right? Which are really interesting. I yep, they were quite that. good. I did that a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. And it was really, it was really interesting. And, yeah. And one of the, you know, one of the things that they talked about, um, which has really no bearing on this, but um, one of the things they talked about was clear cutting sections 
because one of the things that we don't have in New England anymore is emergent forests. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of mature forests, but we don't have emergent forests. So we don't have that habitat is, is disappeared for the most part. Um, is this Paul Catton Zero? Yes. Keystone? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's just, just something else. To we, want, we actually want to invite him to come and talk to us about the town force. But I think you know that might be applicable to yeah. the town force. But do you do you know who these folks are? Do you want an no. introduction? Yeah, and I, and I apologize. The wind picked up right as I had finished covering all my vegetables and decided to open them right up again right before I came. So I'm I'm by the way I'm Matt, um, the chair, and um, work at Woven Roots Farm over in Cheringham, um, and I was then had to go make a delivery of all my vegetables. So I was you made a, little, it. a little frazzled. <laughs> Cut your breath. Yeah. So this is our, some members from our conservation committee. Ron Broker, Chairman. Tom Bell. Sally Underwood Miller. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. We jumped ahead in the, Eric started the uh, chairing and we jumped Perfect. ahead to the um, discussion about the hemlocks mostly on Stockbridge Bowl. Great. You know, I did want to recommend there's a, a book that Yale put out. Yale has been publishing a series of books on native trees. So far, they've done uh, the elm tree, a book called The Republic of Shade, which has a whole section on Stockbridge book. in it. Yeah. Because. Great book. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know the book. Yeah. And uh, then they also did one on Hawthorne that I was kind of disappointed in. But they did one on hemlock, and it's basically. Um, you know, drawn from the experience of the Harvard, Harvard State Forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, it's, it's something that I would recommend. I have a copy at home. But David Foster. I think so. Yeah. yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you collect books on trees. Well, I, I'm a former forester. Yeah. I know these, yeah, I know sure. these books. Um, so I, I think we need to include Stockbridge Bowl Association. And talk, you know, start the conversation uh, with them. To, it, it would be really helpful if they could do some educational presentations of some kind. <clears throat> One thing that concerns me, um, or an, an additional thing that concerns me, is that while we're taking, people are going to be taking down the hemlocks because they're mm -hmm. going to be dying, mm -hmm. they're not going to be planting hemlocks. Well, you know, that so it, we're going to lose those fir trees and there's the needle cast and the pine trees and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know how we were, if we only have deciduous trees being planted, it's not replacing that habitat or that um, mm -hmm. shade so, capability. No, it may. I think that's a good point. And um, although, I mean, it just happened in the, in um, Eight Hawthorne that they were taking down trees and hemlock was something that they wanted to plant. And I suggested they did not. Oh. But I think it way if just somebody to say one more thing, I think we could probably use some advice on what would be good to replant there. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Well, I think too that, uh, I mean, I think this is part of what we've been talking about with our conversations is uh, what's the forest gonna look like in the next 40 years? And which, which way is it heading? And what are we, you know, promoting? Because it, we're going to be like the mid Atlantic sooner than we know it. Um, but we did make a connection with uh, David Orwig at Harvard Forest um, when we were originally setting out. And he wrote a book from Harvard Forest about the woolly Adelgid. And he said he was interested in coming out here and, and chatting. Um, and he has a lot of, he's done a lot of the pamphlet and brochures on it from Harvard Forest. So he may, I mean, if he's willing to do that, he mm. may be someone good to walk around the mm. hole with us. And, yeah. and um, cause we're yeah. talking about ways to get an inventory. Eric had some suggestions, mm. Tom had some suggestions mm. to really see what's there. But if he would be willing to come out and, mm. you know, walk around with us. He, he might be one that just comes out and gives a talk through the Bowl Association or something and educates people on. There's also, Forrester, I, I talked to Mike Profoni 
and he mm -hmm. told me about it, the forester who's been working with them uh, on the, the watershed and also knows the other, like the Stockbridge Mountain oh. plot and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and I left a message from his Jeff Jordan, uh, who's in Beckett. Um, and he seems, he already seems to know, so, you know our, our larger forest tracts. Um, so you know, I'm trying to get a hold of him mm -hmm. to schedule a walk. Mm -hmm. And Mike Buffoni was unfortunately super busy. They were mm -hmm. working with the highway folks dealing with road. Yeah. Work. So when they get free, he'd be very happy to walk the, um, uh, you know, the the, the um, forest around around Avrick Lake. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking if we have a forester who really knows the town, mm -hmm. you, know, they, you know, he might be good to take over to you know, to the woods around around the uh, the bowl as well. Mm -hmm. There are yeah. several that we see several yeah. foresters. Um, ah. mm -hmm. Who would you think? Who would you think of? You're asking me to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> or think about it. Think but about it. But if, if there's somebody who you recommend who you think. No, not necessarily knows. recommend, but yeah. I think, you know, I think it's going to require a, rec a concerted effort. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are several um, foresters who really um, have. So maybe yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Tom Ingersoll, maybe, if he would be willing to do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can dig up some people. Yeah. I mean, we have a whole, we have a file this, this <laughs> on, on uh, the foresters who do the, you know, the cutting. Um, mm -hmm. And that's easy to access. Okay. And Ron, I cut you off. I'm sorry. I wanted to say I something. Where I was going. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look up that. Come back. Yeah, Dan there. Handy is someone who comes to us pretty often. And he's, Bill, Bill Markham's in town. He does yeah, he basically does. forestry work. Yeah. Ben is very um, intuitive in terms of trees. That's just been my experience okay. with him. Well, in, in particular, they've already been doing some work near or around excuse me, the lake. Uh, not now, Dan. Um, that they have knowledge of what trees are around for the, if we want inventory of you know what's what's grown what's big what's coming along um well, to kind of make it like a like a more of like a i don't want to say a point person but like someone who's kind of like we're, we're kind of like who's going to help us with that area particularly that we're going to point to maybe um ingersoll Another one. I, I, I think one it's possible that the bull, oh the drones drones yeah the Stockers Bull Association may actually already have dealt with somebody with some of their property or or the camp may maybe or or Kapalu or Tangawood you never know we yeah. start talking to the landowners one of them may already have a, Moose. No. Yeah. yeah he might have some mm -hmm. he might have some good information between yeah. his yeah. Long time at Kripalu and yeah. now working with the SBA on Bullard Woods. Yeah, good idea. Well, and and we just did a tour. I don't think anybody I don't think mm -hmm. anybody here came. We did a tour with Bob Leverett through Bullard Woods and so many of the old hemlocks there have died. Yeah. Many, oh, yeah. Many of them. I wish I had been able to go to yeah. that. But I could, and this is what I'm hearing. It sounds like because we have the bowl, we have Bullard Woods, we have us, we have the compound, we have, and then there's multiple foresters too that work there. It'd be, just be nice if we all pulled the knowledge into one spot, well, you know, and then you can pull. I was going to say, um, I'm trying to make a list here. People we've talked about, like uh, Agriculture and Forestry mm -hmm. Industry Commission, right? Mm -hmm. And then Stockbridge Bowl, we have the ConCom, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there is a tree warden in town. Right. I don't know if, um, mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. as a courtesy, if you want to include mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. And, um, but anyway, um, I think we, I, mean, I would recommend that we kind of coordinate these mm -hmm. people, basically have a framework mm -hmm. so people aren't kind of working on their own hook and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I already did that, oh, I did it too, right. you know, kind of right. stuff. And, 
you know, have, has this been done? I don't know. We'd have to talk to such and such. Yep. You know what I mean? I do. And, yep. and, uh, you know, keep it organized and an keep it. Huh? Kind of an outline of right. yeah. mm -hmm. where you need info to come from. Right. Yeah. Like on the yeah. hunt kind of, you know, maybe we should have like a tree officer or something. Or something like that. <laughs> so when we do a, a site visit, yeah. there's one person there who is going to do a tree inventory, you know, salmon for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone raising their hands. But I think, I mean, like that, I think just keeping it organized and like what I, part of what our mission, I feel like in the bylaws, promoting forestry. So like something where we're setting up an event, like if it's with David, we have the bowl associated, we have you um, having just all come to an event to get educated by the expert who's coming in to share from outside. And maybe just uh, let the general public know that it's oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. the more people you get interested in it, uh, the better. You know? well, right. And the problem is not just on the bowl. The problem yeah. is not just on the bowl. Yeah. 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 So. You know, and that way, too, at a town meeting, if things come up you know, to vote money for it or to take you know, various measures, if you have like a, a large body of everyday citizens who already are informed about the issues, they're more likely to vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, the means to work mm -hmm. with this. Just a suggestion. Oh, I, like yeah. everyone. <laughs> I also think it would be useful to um, develop a priority list. Mm -hmm. like where where are we in deep trouble? Right. Um, I mean, I have 20 some odd acres of forest that is in the ACEC. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we have adulted and we have been doing forest management for years. Mm -hmm. We have a cutter come in every 20 years or so and take some of the mature trees. Yeah. Um, and if we got, I mean, we have, we have a preponderance of hemlocks, and, but there are a lot of white pines. Yeah. And if we had, if we got hit hard with um, with the adulted, I don't think it would be a huge crisis to our piece of property, for instance. Um, so I guess I'm just, I'm just not clear how we approach this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have Ice Glen, which has the old growth for us, which is obviously important. Yeah. We have the trees that border the various waterways in town, which we have mm -hmm. a ton, mm -hmm. um, that if we lose the shade trees three along the waterways, we will be those three properties right. we'll create huge differences in terms of oh, the environment. Mm -hmm. right. But the Most average yeah. woodland, I'm not sure at this point, is Critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I think our focus right now is the bowl. Yeah. Not and, and you know as you're talking about the. Let's not forget the Housatonic because if that gets, if we lose all the trees along the Housatonic. That's not going to be a good mm -hmm. thing. And for habitat also. Yes. You know, that it's really important habitat on the bowl for mm -hmm. a lot of critters. But I think the I think um, the bowl was. Yeah. What we were talking about. But I think you point out what you know, priority lists for like, you know, we're like we have we have all these organizations or, or commissions. And it's like and I don't want to assume your priorities, but like you were saying, like along the river fronts, holding the riverbanks back as we're gonna have more water <laughs> rushing through just to keep them Yep. Sustained. Thanks. Yeah. Well, a, uh, who's the tonic river association? And then there's the, yeah. <laughs> are, do, are they involved in anything? No, but they probably should be. They should be. Mm -hmm. should be. We could get yeah. in touch with. Um, I'll put them on my list of associations. Uh, <laughs> her name is <clears throat> Can I ask uh, Sally a question? Yeah. Um, under the rivers bill, doesn't the CONCON have within 200 feet of the river? Yes. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah. And so, so when it, when someone takes a tree down within, especially trees that are close to the river, we always ask that they be replaced. That's that's just standard. Yeah. Does anybody know, you know, generally like when trees come down, 
there's a succession, you know, a succession mm -hmm. forest. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what fills in for, you know, naturally for the hemlocks? So early succession? Yeah, well, if you're going to get invasives. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, it should be, it should be like the birches. Yeah. It should be the birches, the pines, and the maples. Oh, right. yeah. But, so but oh, Sally's yeah. right, you're going to get invasives. Oh, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, you know, for a long time when we would talk with the bull and, and they would talk about aquatic plants, they would they went on the assumption that as soon as they took out the milfoil, mm -hmm. native aquatic mm -hmm. plants would take their place. And I used to say, do any of you people garden? You know, <laughs> if you turn up a plot of land, right. <laughs> you're not so going to get, you know, a bunch of, you know, native plants sprouting. You're going to get a nice variety of invasives. And yep. I, I imagine that would be the case here too. Yeah. Well, I think the commission does. I think I think we do a pretty good job oh, on that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We do on the bowl. But now, if you plant young hemlocks, is there a certain stage at which the woolly adult? I don't really recommend. Go that. go walk through Ice Glen. It's on all ages. I think all it's just everything. Yeah. yeah. If you're a hemlock needle, they like you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The ash tree, though, that's a little different. It has to get up to a a size where the yep. bark starts to rough it up before the, mm -hmm. the little beetle, that little beetle gets in it. So those, those, those are probably going to be like elm trees. Yeah. You're never going to get rid of all, right. yep. but you're never going to get big ones again. Mm -hmm. So and the hemlock, I think that's and then a whole other case where there's not, there's, there, at some point there won't be a regeneration of hemlock trees. Right. The ash were treated successfully at Ice Glen. That, mm -hmm. that worked yeah. well. What, what is that? The ash trees were treated. Yeah, yeah, it worked really yeah, that worked, very nicely. That worked mm -hmm. well. Yeah, did, you, did we cover what we did in, in Ice Glen already? Just yeah. highlights. Just, just highlights. Yeah, yeah, just go into too much detail. Yeah, that we, yeah, we did inject. It's a little like Sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill. <laughs> yeah. I mean, trying to, trying to eradicate an invasive species. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that's our mission. Yeah, we're not. Nobody's looking at it. We we wanted to preserve as much as possible of the old growth forest in Ice Glen because it's old growth. It, that's sure. unique. But in terms of trying to protect, you know, the, the hemlocks at large, forget about it. Right. Well, that's that was my point. Is mm -hmm. that you know when we start to see some major die off. Mm -hmm. And people are taking the trees down because they either have tried right. treating and it hasn't worked or whatever. I mean, we've got, we don't have that much history with this at this point. Um, what is the strategy for not replacing those trees? Because mm -hmm. I'm not sure how we would do that, you know, because the hemlock is pretty unique um, in terms of its... Mm -hmm existence and its configuration and all that and we, if we put in white Ooh. pines it's not yeah. going to be the well, same thing well and i think that's like the uh the next 40 years next 400 years if we're transitioning to like the mid-atlantic all these trees are already migrating north as mm -hmm. right as they naturally are just with the temperatures let alone predation pressure uh do we eventually get to that point where we're starting to look towards more mid-Atlantic trees, stuff that's growing in New Jersey right now, you know, uh, because that, when I was in college and forest ecology, that was like a good buffer zone. There was a lot of Northern trees and a lot of Southern trees all kind of meet, meshing right there, but that border is getting, yeah. mm -hmm. going to be coming our way so sooner than later. Getting is more oaks, tulip mm -hmm. trees. Mm -hmm. I think that's where David or would, would, would be really helpful yeah. to come and talk with us it, it'd be, to see what, you know, if we do recommend replanting. And I, you know, I think we need to be proactive and not wait until the landowner has to take it down, yeah. but really try to get the information to the Stockwood oh, yeah. Association that mm -hmm. we're going to lose some of these trees. So mm -hmm. you may be, maybe to your benefit to start planting now in the mm -hmm. understory. So when those trees do come down. You have something there. And you're going to lose the maples too, because the maples, maples are not going to be able to survive mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mid-Atlantic. Right. Except for red maples. <laughs> red, red maples. Red. Red. <laughs> and, and that's you know that's a huge mm -hmm. that's a huge hit for 
yeah. of the economy as well, mm -hmm. because the sugaring is going to be in Canada. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, but they, and and on top of that too, with with treating all this, you know, like if you have a private homeowner on the bowl or on the Housatonic, you know, one thing that and please speak up how you felt about this when we were talking about treating Ice Glen, you know, we talked a lot about the water <laughs> and how close it was to people who are drinking water. Okay. And a lot of the, the, the treatment we chose, you know, reading through it, and we, I read through some of the documents of like, what's the biggest issue, why people are so against it, being a, a neonic, uh, was that how water soluble it was. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's being used on corn seed and people are planting fields of it preemptively, and then it rains and it gets washed off the seed and goes into their drinking water. It kills all the bees. It kills everything. And the so, butterflies and the everything else. Yeah, so we wouldn't, the, con the yeah. conservation commission wouldn't. So that's, a, that's something for you to know, just when someone's saying, okay, I'm gonna go on the bowl and I got a hemlock with its roots in the water, you know, that, that scares me. Whereas like, I was like, great, up in the woods, far away from, from people drinking or using that, any water that would be up there. Um, it's just something that could be, it's really easy to just get into waterways from wherever it's being used. I, I think it's, it's up to us collectively to um, get the information mm -hmm. that we can then turn into advice about um, what to do, what kinds of, what, what species to replace with, mm -hmm. how to do it, when to do it, so that we're taking into consideration climate, um, you know, climate change and, and sustainability along. And we want, to, we want to have people over the next 20 years putting in trees that are gonna be able to live for another, you know, mm -hmm. 100 or 200 years. And we don't wanna be planting trees that are, you know, are going to be fighting for their lives, you know, pretty soon. Well, you want to hedge your bet, yeah. you know, I, I, that's the way I take it. If I'm going to plant maple or hemlock, I might also be planting in something else that, that I've been recommended. And I think that goes back to your priority list of maybe not even areas. It's just like plants, like priorities of like the trees being the hemlocks and other stuff that we're trying to keep going, but also a priority list of, other options so for the future. It may make sense for the Conservation Commission to come up with a, a, a suggested planting list for the bowl. <clears throat> but so when we do come across people that are either losing trees or taking trees down, we have some suggestions. Do you think it'd be possible for the ConCon -Con and your committee and uh, uh, you know other people involved, the foresters and such, to put together uh, like a five-page brochure mm -hmm. that you could distribute to everybody on the bowl. Mm -hmm. And there's a good part of Stockbridge's population falls into that that area. I think mm -hmm. there's like 400 homes. At least there. Okay. And uh, you know, and just distribute that. Um, you know, as as a means of education, or else you know, put it online. I'm, to say I'm a what? paper person, mm -hmm. but, you know. <laughs> Yeah. What would it include? What would you? What would the well, brochure say? Um, if a, you know, how to identify a tree that's been infected. Um, you know, who they should contact about it. Um, you know, as Ron was saying, the, the expense could be considerable if you have seven or eight trees mm -hmm. that needed to come down. You know, I, I, one of my neighbors had an estimate the. Uh, for a white pine that happened to be next to a barn. And the estimate on that was $5,000. That was actually mm -hmm. from Stockbridge Grange, $5,000 just to take it down. Yeah. So depending on where these trees are placed, you could be talking about some serious money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if the town feels that they would have an interest in, in at least helping with that, you know? Uh, I'd be surprised. Uh, you would be surprised. I, I mean, it's private land. It's, uh, private, it's private land. Yeah, yeah but it's private. public interest yeah. to control this, you know. I mean, when you take a, an infected tree down, does it give healthy trees some time? Or are there any healthy trees left? Hmm. 
I think you get him. That's a can of worms if you start doing on private land. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. But I like the idea of a brochure. So, you know, getting somehow getting the information out to yeah. Stockbridge so, Bowl and, Association. And what to put in the brochure. I mean, I'm, again, I'm just kind of brainstorming yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But what to put in it? That would take real thought, you know. Yeah. And I always find that when you're when you're having a session like this, it's not until you sit down and, and go to write it up. Mm -hmm. You know, even on one page or something, you know. That I have a really question. Thoughts oh, in order. Yeah. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that uh, brochure already exist? It How is it I agree? Well, well, you got forestry departments at every state university in New England. I think, I think pieces of it, it probably exist in different places I, I i i like the idea it's along the lines of what i was thinking but to make it specific to the bowl right. um, well, and, but and i think the on, information yeah. is out there you're right eric the information is there well i think i think that it would be good for us to oh, yeah. to kind of call the information from different sources into into one document that went from what to look for how to recognize mm -hmm. you know how to recognize that you know a tree that's that's in trouble all the way through to which species to plant and and when to do it, you know, just really walk people through the whole, you know, step by step of you know what's the problem, how do you tell if you've got it, what do you do about it, you know, and here are the particulars. I mean, and I I agree, Eric. If we can find that one, which there might there might already be a great one because I know we've already pulled a lot of really nice information from UMass extension that's basically in a brochure-esque form. And Harvard Forest. And Harvard Forest, which is, you know, it's just focused on Willie Adelgid or Ashbor. We um, might be able to get a few and synthesize them. Right. You know, right. we can get three, four, five right. that are strong, this one's strong in this area, this one like this, and then do a synthesis. And then I like the idea of, of just being like, who to contact for certain issues, you know, like, because, it should be the tree warden. <laughs> tree, tree warden is going to get front and center <laughs> up top on that brochure for a lot of the issues, but at least they know if it's then agriculture or something that's mm -hmm. forested related. Is it reasonable to do that to the tree warden at this point? I mean, it's one guy, you know. Well, that's, I mean, that's fair too. It needs to be. Yeah. Um, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how much expertise he right. has in that regard. Um, right. in terms well, of I would like to see the tree ward get a, a raise, actually. Well, yeah. It's That's been true. like $2,800 since I moved here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you know I, I also fair. think you would attract, like, as maybe an upper level of talent as well as... Mm -hmm. Also, I, I think that... You, I mean, but $2,800 is not going to buy you a lot of time. Yeah, it really doesn't. I don't, I would, I would imagine that the DCR Forester who's free would also be available. Well, Tom Ryan mm -hmm. does this yeah. section. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, right. I mean, so I think he's, yeah. he's someone he's that we could tap. very invested yeah. in, the, in the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, and he's... And I session. think he would be willing to come out. I think Paul yep. Cananzaro would be willing to come out and talk to us about what they've been doing at Harvard Forest. Yep. Um, I get emails from them on a weekly basis. I get the Keystone emails. And, uh, yeah. okay. and you might ask them if they have any pamphlets. Yeah. Right. They might have something developed. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I think Tom Ryan would be a better contact right. mm -hmm. to not overwhelm the. Uh, yeah. So it maybe sounds like too just for like an action item for us to do is find a common time where we can we can sit down again with Tom Ryan with someone mm -hmm. um, and ask some of these more high high level questions of like the priority list. Do you already have a brochure? Yep. Um, and just get them get them in into the house here. And include if that happens to include um, SBA mm -hmm. because you know they may already be working on this. We don't know, but I think you know it's there. Yeah. I haven't heard anything that they're working on it, but but I know that they you know I mean we talked about it at the SBSC meeting the other day. Okay. And Pat Canale is on that committee, so mm -hmm. she 
She heard loud and clear, I'm sure, that we're concerned about the- Would she be, you think she would come to a- I, I think she would, come I don't know if she'd come in person, but certainly she could attend via Zoom. We think it'd be possible for us to put together a mail group, an email group. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I know I could get your email off the town website, mm -hmm. but I was gonna try to get it. <laughs> have to look it up. But, uh, but you know, for like the right people on the SBA, don't they have like a central committee or something? Uh, they have their board. Their board, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, the board. And Pat is the Yeah, chair. so if you if you have the board, you're the, mm -hmm. the con con. Uh, I would talk to Michael Canales about approaching the tree board. He probably has more direct access because my experience is trying to get the tree board can be difficult. What do you find? Yeah, I haven't been able to. You haven't been able to. Well, I, I was being nice. <laughs> so, so I, but I think Tom Ryan might be available and this might be more, although technically, I don't know if it's a forest, but we can certainly reach well, out to I him. I was really thinking, you know, in some ways, just because he is the tree warden of the town, Mm -hmm. It's kind of a courtesy. Yeah, to, oh, sure. You know, he, he may have stuff to contribute. I don't know. I've not oh. met our current tree warden. So. I've, I've talked to him a couple of times, and he is very, like, every time we talked about something we want to do, he's very on board with it. And, yeah. you know, but I think to your point, too, it's, you know, $20 and dollars only gets you so much time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he already was. <laughs> You know, had I, when I talked to him, he's like, I already, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't get back. He already had a lot on his plate. Oh, yeah. So, you know. Also, I think that his his responsibility is actually fairly limited. I don't think it's any tree anywhere. It's, I think it's merely town trees. Public way. Also, there's scenic roads and stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the scenic mm -hmm. roads? It's in the bylaw. It's actually a state law that we adopted. You know, we have seven, 11 scenic roads. And if you're going to cut a tree along a scenic road, mm -hmm. right, you actually have to have a public hearing mm -hmm. with the tree warden and the planning board. You know, also, if you're going to alter a stone wall along one of the scenic roads, mm -hmm. again, you have to uh, prospect a road in the scenic mm -hmm. road, for an example. Right. But there's 11 of them. Right. Right. So the bowl may not be. The bowl Because may it's private. Bowl. It's private. It's not it's a, uh, yeah. it may not be in his jurisdiction. Right. It probably won't. I, I could I could check. Actually, uh, you guys did a site visit, Mackinac Road. Yeah. That is a scenic road. Right. Yeah. So well, it's Prospect Hill and goes all the way up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it turns into Mackinac. And, and I know it's I know this meeting was about the bowl in particular, but I think if we have Tom Ryan, I think we, we've already kind of touched on broader aspects that are going to be affecting a lot of riverways, the lake, for us, forests. Um, so maybe we frame it, we invite the stoppage bowl to really, to get them and be like, this is where it affects you. Mm -hmm. And, but it's talking on these broader sure. tree types, future of the trees, the pests, and paint it as more of just a forestry in general. And then we just got to bring stoppage bowl in on it and say like, this is why we're part of why we're really doing this. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the whole aspect of climate um, changing is something we really have to be proactive about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both in, in, you know, being aware of what the changes are that are coming down, but also how we mm -hmm. can, how we can be proactive in, in terms of, you know, recommending as you suggested. Mm -hmm you know, which trees are going to be able to survive mm -hmm. the mid-Atlantic climate. Yes. If you're spending, you know, $1,000 or whatever on planting a tree, mm -hmm. you'd want to make sure that it's going to last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think to this, this year, for at least for me, being outside every day on the farm has been an example of, I think, what's coming because we have the drought, um, we were really lucky because we have really great soil, retained a lot of moisture and we did get a little bits of rain, but the rain came at like three inches at once. And if your soil didn't catch it, you were, you were out of luck until the next six inches of rain. So like we might be on par, but it's coming in these downpours rather than spread out over time. So uh, at least that's 
I've noticed that we, we've been getting like blocks of, of a certain type of weather. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you know, as Mark Twain said, if you don't like the weather in New England, just wait a few <laughs> minutes. But that's not no longer true, I find. I mean, and I can remember being younger, like the weather just seemed to change a lot more frequently, you know, and uh, sometimes within a single day. And now it's like you can get four weeks of heat without rain and then you get rain for two weeks sometimes and, and it really the the kind of um, sequencing of the weather has changed mm -hmm. yeah. at least as far as i've noticed mm -hmm. well they've been predicting that they've been mm -hmm. saying we've had i think mm -hmm. they were saying we we're going to have wetter springs and then and we've noticed i have you know comes up on your facebook page this is what it was you know in whenever mm -hmm. and there's snow on the <laughs> in the middle of October. Right. I remember right. you know, I remember my family used to gather on Columbus Day weekend and we used to go up to the caves up behind my house. And um it was not infrequent that there was snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. And yet when have we seen mm -hmm. when have we seen snow? It's eighty and degrees and that kind of cold weather. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. recently, we, we haven't. Yeah. And we have the snow ski probably about two, seven years ago. Yes, but the ski, you think about the ski areas, there are no cross-country ski areas no. around anymore because there's no natural snow mm -hmm. to sustain them. I mean, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. We don't ski at Thanksgiving at the right. downhill areas. Yeah. Um, they, I don't think half of them opened until after New Year's last year. Mm -hmm. And that's all shifting, you know, and yet we've had snow later in the year. We've had snow in April, mm -hmm. and we, but we're not getting it in November. Mm -hmm. And all of that is changing. It's changing when things pollinate. It's changing how the mm -hmm. critters react to you know things that things that used to eat this can't eat that anymore because it isn't hatching when it used to hatch and and it isn't pollinating when it used to pollinate and all of those things are combining to create a whole new dynamic which is not necessarily healthy and there are going to be um you know there are going to be consequences that i don't think we've even begun to see yep well, so, so where would you go? I know you have other business. <laughs> what would you? What's our What's our action plan? Yeah, what, what, what would you like to go next with this? So I think we need to set up. I, I think we heard Tom Ryan would be nice. Uh, David Orwig too, um, which I, I have his contact. I can reach out to. Um, and let's try to set up a time where we can get all in the room and ask some of these these higher level questions. Um, about trees, about about the future, um, and including, including SBA, and we'll include SBA. So we'll find out when Tom is available, when David's available. Maybe we can do have two people come. That would be the plus, um, and try to schedule it, and we'll be in touch. Um, I'll do David actually, and then someone who I don't know who's closest with Tom. I'm not close to Tom. I can I can get in touch with Tom. Tom? Mm -hmm. I'll also um, I'll also get in touch with Pat and see if she has somebody on the SBA who'd be interested in being the, the yeah. tree guy or tree woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think we get it, um, and one of two ways: either we can just have it um, be our organizations. Um, and did you want to get in touch with the who's the town of river people? I was going to say, I can do that. Allison Dixon is the person to talk okay. to. So we'll just get in touch with those groups. It can either just be us in the room, or we can decide if it, it's going to be spread yeah, wide. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got the Zoom still, so if they can't make it in person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So what, what's your email? Just, uh, just if you actually do. If you do the what's it the um, Stockbridge, at, yeah, the um, famous for us. You mean what's the group email? The group email yeah, is for, for you guys. Yeah. I think it's AFC. I think it's just AFC. AFC, right? and that will send automatically to all of us. Maybe you could send us send mm -hmm. the Conservation Commission an email. For exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, Lisa has that. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of that. I'll send. I think, but I, yeah, I think it's yeah. AFC, but I'll send you. 
I'll send it to you and the Conservation Commission. Yep, just AFC at Stockbridge. Yep. Um, all right. So I think the more you, you have the different, you know, you know groups communicating. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Be careful of the, uh, the meaning law. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, well, maybe we we'll share information. Exactly. You can share all the information you want under the open meeting law. It's not a violation. You just can't yes. deliberate or make judgments. What, what we can do is, is, is um, I can write the agenda, and it could be a joint meeting, a, a jo or a joint meeting, um, yeah. and then that way it will. You it as a joint meeting. Yeah. Perfect. I should put it on the conservation agenda to be a joint meeting. Perfect. So either way. I don't know if you both have to do it as a joint meeting. I think somebody. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I figured it saves them sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Because right. right. we didn't know that we'd have a quorum from the conservation. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, right. technically, we probably do. With, yeah, we do. We do with me. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you for having us. No, thank, thank you for coming Thanks and showing up. This is great. Yeah. Again, I apologize for being late on my end, um, but thank you, Eric, for for taking the lead there and getting it going. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks again. Oh, we'll see you tomorrow, at least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Can we do the minutes from last? All right. We skipped the first two because we didn't know exactly exactly, <laughs> exactly what what they were about. Yes. Um, so going back to the first two things um, for the Arbor Day, um, just an update. I am also on the um, advisory board for the horticultural program uh, at the Monument Mountain. And we had that meeting last week, and I got talking to Bill Florick, who runs the program over there, and mentioned that, you know, we had um, done Arbor Day, and we got talking about how it might be a good idea for the kids um, at Monument and the Greenhouse program if they were to start propagating some trees. And then he sent me that article that I shared uh, through the email about propagating native plants and trees um, in your greenhouse. You didn't get that. Oh, you didn't get that. Didn't get that? It should be a link. Uh, growing trees, if you click on that link in the email. And it brings you to growing forestry transplants in your greenhouse. Right. Okay, I missed it. Yeah. So if you, and he sent me that because after we had talked the next day, he, he got that um, little newsletter. So he seemed very interested in that. Um, having the kids, they do a lot of technical work and they're transitioning into a lot of vocational skills um, at Monument and doing propagation. Um, so um, we said we'd still be in touch and I'll try to maybe get him here and we could talk about it. Um, but I was thinking, Abby, do you know Mr. Flork? I do. He was pretty much my favorite teacher when I went to oh, Bonnet, So I thought I remembered that. So yeah. at some point, I'd like to catch up and, and maybe um, you could be the contact with him um, because that would be really cool if we could get it might not be in time for next year. He said he, he was thinking about maybe taking cuttings with some classes and getting them rooted some native so trees. let's get them to propagate small trees that we can plant around Stockbridge Bowl. It could, it could, it could be something like that. And I just thought it'd be great for next year just to get going because um, instead of buying in all these plants uh, from, from yep. elsewhere, um, also it fulfills, I feel like uh, the kids uh, mission where they're going to be propagating. They do a lot of propagation. Which Abby, did you you had? Did you take all the courses? Um, I took horticulture for two years. Not sure if they changed the program since mm -hmm. I was there. There's only one uh, horticulture class when I was there. Gotcha, gotcha. I think they're trying to expand. You know, and we put down 
in our, you know, which I don't want to take too much time on this. Um, I think they're trying to expand the program and maybe in the future, five years down the road, having a couple teachers there. So, um, but anyway, I just, that was one update from last week where we got talking and I thought of you, Abby, as, as maybe being interested in, in getting that. Uh, we, they also had a representative there from Wards, Sam. I don't know. Um, yeah. Do you know Sam? Yeah, he was my manager for two years. I used to work at Ward, so. Oh, perfect. So I didn't, get, I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but I thought there might be a collaboration um, there between the students, between wards, um, and maybe we can have this become a, a recurring, um, recurring mission um, or recurring um, activity for the kids. So are you thinking it for Arbor Day? 23 or 24? We'll see. You know, I don't think they'll be ready in time. I think he, you know, wasn't thinking about seeds. He was actually thinking about grafting mm -hmm. and getting, starting uh, propagating trees from uh, cuttings, which would mean they, they are quicker. So I don't know where it would land, um, but he definitely seemed interested and they are always looking for projects. Great. Um, so we could start small and then eventually you know, mm -hmm. once you propagate it, you keep, take care of it, you can build up a stock, yep. you know, um, over time. So that was the one update. And so Abby, we'll talk more about that at some point and we'll have Mr. Florick in here um, and we can, we can really make a plan for it. Um, farmers Mark- talk about um, where he would be getting the uh, cuttings from? No, he did Just not. Around. Just okay. around. Well, and I think that's, that's another question to kind of work on. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, it was a very, like, this sounds like a great idea. We did not get into details. <laughs> Need to elaborate. About, okay. Cool. <laughs> how to elaborate on it. So is this a follow up for Abby to do? Oh, well, so yeah, I think what, it, um, well, Abby, if you want, if that's one to be the action to reach out to Mr. Florek, mm -hmm. remind him um, of kind of what we talked about. Um, starting uh, native uh, trees and plants for mm -hmm. Arbor Day. Um, and you can see, see me on that just to make sure he remembers. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll just go from there and then we can start doing updates um, and get him to come to a meeting and talk about, okay. his, about his plan, which that would be also, if you could ask him to come to a meeting, that would be great. Uh, the next meeting in December? Yeah, if you want to ask him, okay. and then if he can't do it, it's okay. We can schedule it later. Mm -hmm. um, but ask him for next December, and then just let me know, and I'll put it on the agenda. Okay, cool. I will let you know, and I'll CC you on that. Thank you. Um, farmer's Market. Um, Michael uh, is picking a couple of... Um, job descriptions out from some markets that would be reasonable size lead to ours, mm -hmm. our potential. Um, some, once he sends me those job descriptions, I'll put something together that we can all read to make sure, just get it and then get it back to him. Um, but I had a talk with him and we're looking at promoting it as potentially a, a the board was on, the select board was on on board with the ten thousand um, dollars spaced out. Um, and that being said, if we started like in January or end of January, February, whatever wherever we want it to land, so it it will be finishing up that fiscal year. Um, if we were doing quote unquote ten hours a week worth of work at twenty five dollars an hour. That'd be roughly about four grand uh, for 16 weeks. Um, obviously, you know, it's not going to be like 10 hours exactly each week. There might be some weeks where we need more and some weeks we need less um, because it's, I think the way Michael's thinking of it as is a stipend, you know, but we have to kind of just say 10 weeks or uh, put it into how many hours a week, just to let people know mm -hmm. what we're thinking. Um, and in terms of that, they would answer to Michael as basically he would handle the whole HR 
basically side of right. of it and but we would help with the planning and be the resource um to the coordinator to help them figure out so part of that too i think is we'll have some donated hours of, of our time um, when need be, if it means putting up a signs, mm -hmm. helping get in touch with someone and helping them through it all. Um, but we thought $25 would be the way to attract someone mm -hmm. um, because that's, I don't know if we could do less in this right. work environment. Mm -hmm. And do we know that this parking lot is the space? I, I think I think that I have not heard anyone say anything that they object to it. Um, I think the only thing we're waiting for is to have the coordinator to say yes, this is this works out, and then we can we can go from there. Uh, I mentioned it at the select board um, meeting that I went to, and no one seemed to be uh, bat an eyelash that it wouldn't be a possibility. Now that being said. I'm hoping the coordinator will help find those little speed bumps in, in the road that we might not be thinking about with maybe the police department, um, anyone else using this facility. Well, it doesn't have to literally be in a parking lot. You right. think about the um, the craft fair that mm -hmm. is done in, in August. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's on the grass. Right. Right. But, right, you know, wrapping right around here and over toward the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, right. the, the ball court. Mm -hmm. So it works out just fine. Yeah. Okay, but they come in a truck. That's why you need the parking lot. Right. So you'd want to have easy, easily accessible for the vendors mm -hmm. to get. So, but I think that's why we're here. <laughs> we're going to have to figure those little minutia out mm -hmm. because the other thing is the back. The they just resurfaced the basketball court down low, mm -hmm. and if they can pull up and go around and drop off right very close to the basketball court. That's another option I, I noticed when they were redoing it. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure there's no one using it come right. whatever right. time we decide. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. speaking of time. Yeah. Um, since this is a new farmer's market, mm -hmm. nobody's going to want to commit for an entire season. And the best mm -hmm. way to get it off the ground is say four weeks, one month, when there's vegetables and the word of mouth, if we're successful, we'll uh, get around to the other farmers. Yeah. But they, you can't get a commitment for, for a whole season in a new market. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a sh fairly short time. You, you can find farmers that'll do that just to try it out. And it is Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. And that's how we did it in Gloucester. And it was very successful. So do you mean like one farmer would commit for June, one farmer commits? No, 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 oh, no. So, okay, so explain. Just one. One month, mm -hmm. four or five weeks. Yeah. That's all. Fall for the whole market. Yeah. I see. Yes. Which I actually like that because then for our our budget and have how much time there's probably going to need to be even set up and communicate. Yeah. You know, there's gonna, that's going to be the bulk of this season is just the communication side, setting it all up, finding all the problems, and then to have someone here every week for three months. Mm -hmm. You know, setting that's up much. that's a lot, and for what we're we're budgeting, yeah. I don't want to exceed that, and I think it makes it a lot more manageable yeah. if we do it for like a month or six weeks well yeah. five weeks just you just yeah. don't want to for a new market you got to prove yourself mm -hmm. even though it's free um and the shorter the time i would say five weeks maybe one week in july and then in, into august when you actually have corn tomatoes and things like that uh, because that's what people come to the market for. You can sell all the honey you want once, right? Um, but you need the, you need you need the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, that's perfect, and I think that's that's what we need to communicate and convey to the coordinator. And so when they when we do get some hire, we can wrap wrap their head around it. So it is a very like brand new market. <laughs> Keep it simple. 
make it so people can just be profitable mm -hmm. at, at all costs this first, first mm -hmm. season here. Right, and they don't have a commitment to show up for three months. Right, yeah. right. Which will make it more attractive to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. I'm on board with that. Okay, so that's that's where we're at with the, the farmer's market. Um, next up, um, neighborhood outreach grants. Okay, so I took a look at what Patrick had sent out. Um, you know, off the top of my head, it's basically money to do outreach to particular neighborhoods to provide some information. I don't know if this is something we would be looking at for Stockbridge Bowl Association. It may be a place to use it, but off the top of my head, I didn't feel like it was, mm -hmm. we had a dire need for it right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say in looking it over, I don't know if anybody else had a chance to mm -hmm. look it over. I think keep it on a back burner Mm -hmm. And if we find that it's something we want to do, we can, um, because the deadline for this one is, Sorry, um, no, oh, no. Uh, reimbursement request. I, I don't think the deadline has passed. Oh, no, you're right. I was looking at the wrong way. Yeah. What are the deliverables? I'm not, I don't know what that means. Um, there were, what is the grant expecting to do? Basically, provide information, neighborhood scale outreach, so provide information, something like what we're talking about if we do make a brochure, um, you know, local information. Yeah, it's like outreach. As I know, the brochure would certainly be part of it if we could pull it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to help. We ought to pull it together before we... Right, right, right. We need to we need to do some work on that before yeah. to help inform could... landowner decisions about the future of their land. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that right? it, you know yeah to so outreach to the neighborhood whatever we define mm -hmm. it to be um, to advise landowners on conservation based estate planning land protection options and the grant size. Mm -hmm. It's about um, twenty five hundred to five thousand. Well, the five thousand maximum, and they prefer mm -hmm. three hundred to twenty five hundred. So that really is like the scale to to do a brochure. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, that's actually a if we were to do and pull together a bro nice brochure. Mm -hmm. This is something. And then we could pay pay someone to actually put it, put the imagery and and make it really nice yeah. instead of just the design and print it and yeah mail it so i think we need to get our uh, yeah our ducks yeah. in order on the brochure before we talk about applying yeah. um, but it's good to know it's there and it's dcr so you you know the, the, we may miss one deadline and it might come up again mm -hmm. if we don't have it Yeah. Uh, so, and there's no deadline. I don't see the deadline in here. It, it's on a rolling basis. Yeah, oh, that's good. So, uh, they just want it's on a rolling basis until the funding runs out, mm -hmm. and all activities must com be completed by April fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So, if we put this together and then. Mm -hmm. We can request funds from them. Mm -hmm. Request funds, and then we can make it really, really nice. Mm -hmm. All right. By the way, I was just Googling around while it was. Maine's got a uh, Department of Forestry Resources. Since they mm -hmm. have the most forest, I could not find publications, though. They do Fine, have an experiment doesn't. station also, mm -hmm. which I'm sure is focused on forests. You were looking for publications on the Adelgid? I was looking for any publications, but I found yeah. out how I could apply to graduate school, basically. <laughs> so I think in our, I mean, we had good Adelgid, some good Adelgid information in the report that Ken did for us. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I think through Mass DCR, there's more. Well, I think uh, David Orwig, I, I have it on my computer. I mean, they have like a, like, it's almost more like a booklet. Yeah. There's a ton of information in it. It's just, I think for us, it's great. But for someone who just wants to learn like what, what the basics are, we need to like synthesize it. So I can, yeah. I can look around and mm -hmm. see what I can find that that's um, friendly mm -hmm. for the public. Yeah. I, I think that for us that what it's really going to come down to is, is, well, what do you do about it? You know, I mean, learning about the blood of the adulthood is like, you know, the first three paragraphs and then it's, then it's, mm -hmm. then it's okay. Now mm -hmm. what? See my, and my thought is the now what is to do proactive planting, right? Not okay. not to do heavy treatments on the bowl. No, that's no. Just not going to. Well, gonna, I think no. I think that's kind of what we'll have to like. Once we have the information, then we just need to be like, here are your options, right. and okay. you know, whatever way we want to put it on the brochure to make it imagery wise. Like, I think we'll have to make take a vote on like what are we recommending. Because I, if we're not telling anyone that this is what they have to do, but I think we have to, like you said, be careful of like, these are your options. Treating is an option, but it's, here's, here's why we don't recommend spring. X. The CONCON won't approve spring. Yeah, so right. think treating is not an option if it's within yeah. the, mm -hmm. the zone that CONCON yeah. is, right. is controlling. Right. So, so, but they, could, they could do what we did, which is inject. Mm -hmm. They could. Well, because it's going to cost to take down a tree. It's going to cost four or five grand. Right. What we uh -huh. see a lot, though, too, mm -hmm. is there's a lot of dead trees. I mean, there's a lot that are already dead that the landowner they come they come to the concom saying, you know, mm -hmm. we can we take this tree down? It's already dead. It's already dead. Yeah. Well, okay, but what I'm saying is, if we're <laughs> we're putting identify it if it's you know, past call call an arbiters, but yeah, yeah, and then you can treat it if it's not too far gone, and it will take a number of treatments over a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. or plant a new tree and wait for it to die, and you pay four or five thousand dollars to get rid of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's like that's what we have to be careful, like because we can't identify each since it's a pro like it's a brochure it's like we have to be as concise as possible without going into like every right. option whereas like there will be a point where we're just like consult uh your local forester you know and like give a recommendation of here you can go find a list you know uh where we're, so we're not promoting a forester we're just like here's the website you go to to get your mm -hmm. get someone to come look at your tree, um, but I think that you know we'll let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's mm -hmm. get it all down and all the options on on a page. Yep. And then we'll have to have a meeting just on that to like break down that list a little bit more. I'll look though and see what's out there. Mm -hmm. I can get some good information. Oh, that's good. That'd be great if we could. Get some money to make it look real good, real mm -hmm. nifty. Okay, um, moving right along. Okay, the philosophy, which I'm realizing now, I didn't get to forward to everybody. Oh, you have it though. I do have it. Uh, so I wrote a very simple two two sentence draft. Oh, good. You want to read it? Or you want me to read it? I can read it. I can read it. Okay, I can read it. Okay. This is a draft which I will uh, pass along. Um, and I think to um, this is obviously open for. Yeah, this is, I, I'm bringing this with the intention that people tear it to pieces. Tear, yeah. Just gave us a place to start. Sorry. By that, uh, the Agriculture and Forestry Commission recognizes the distinct role of the uh, role that older forests have in providing scenic landscapes, critical habitat, ecosystem diversity, spiritual retreat, and carbon sequestration. 
For these reasons, the commission encourages efforts to increase forest resilience by keeping wooded landscapes forested, connected, and protected. Hmm. I like that last line. I like it. Hmm. Hmm. It's, it's interesting. I, I've been thinking all along that what that I, I want to encourage maintaining older forests. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until tonight when Sally raised the issue of emergent forests mm -hmm. that I hadn't really thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, do we want to actually encourage you know, diversity in, in forest well, age as well. I don't know. I think, I mean, my thought when we started this conversation with those, that training from Paul Cat and Zero um, was to select it's either certain sections of Stockbridge Forest or small, some, um, if there's smaller forested areas, certainly not everything, but to, to, with the advice of who's ever working in those forests now, to say, yeah, this would be a good one to just let B. Mm -hmm. So in other places, mm -hmm. certainly they can do, you know, some clear cutting or some, you know, wildlife habitat, but to really start to keep in mind that some areas are just left better, mm -hmm. you know, leaving them alone. Yeah. Or even doing practices that accelerate the, mm -hmm. the, the movement toward old growth. Hmm. Yeah, I think because one thing, since we are dealing with public uh, lands, you know, and since we also haven't seen, haven't had a site visit yet, you know, um, I think it, it, like you brought up, like the fact that we aren't talk, mentioning uh, emergent forests, which are an important habitat. Um, doesn't mean just because we're supporting the the gr growth to an older forest. I think we're going to find forests at all those stages. Mm -hmm. We're kind of just supporting them at whatever stage they're at to become uh, older landscapes. Yeah. Or, yes, and in older forests, just natural disturbance creates openings right. that allow mm -hmm. that to happen. Since everybody didn't get the the draft, I just I just forwarded it to everyone. Do you want to look at it tonight or take time to think it over for the next meeting? It's, I, 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 I watched the hour presentation that Matt sent out, um, and hmm. you're talking about private lands. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a number of ways to deal with it. I thought it was a very good presentation, mm -hmm. and this does not really address that. So I'd like to think about it. And maybe we'll go back and re rewatch that. It's only about an hour. Yeah. Are you you're referring to the uh, managing for old growth? Yes. Yeah. That was very good. That's very good. Then that was from from you. That was from yeah. me, and and um, yeah, we talked. I think at the last meeting, Eric, about possibly inviting, uh, I, I would like to invite them to come talk to us. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be very willing to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be good to take some time with it and just think of anything else pops in their mind. But, but it, it, yeah. It, um, yeah, take your time to look at it over because it really is a draft. Um, but what was the feat? Uh, you said a little bit about they're going to try to set up a site visit for us, shall we? Oh, um, so uh, that's right. You, you, I, I said this before you got here. Uh, I, I reached Microphony, mm -hmm. and they were just tied up, yeah. you know, with road work actually. Mm -hmm. um, but he would love to schedule a walk with us on the, uh, you know, the land around Avic Lake. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna keep, you know, right. working to arrange something there. Okay. He also told me that um, the forester who he uses, uh, Jeff Jordan. 
also knows um, the Stockbridge Mountain mm -hmm. property pretty well. Oh, sweet. Um, and so, you know, Mike doesn't need to be on that walk, obviously. Gotcha. So I, I left a message with Jeff's wife a couple of days ago to, uh, you know, saying what, what we were in, in getting together about, and I need to follow up with that because he hasn't called back. Gotcha. Um, so I think we're going to probably, probably be able to schedule two walks, one mm -hmm. with both of them um, at the watershed and then one with Jeff alone mm -hmm. on the other property. Perfect. Great. Great. Yeah. That'll be good. Thank you. Oh, um, sure. The one, one last thought too about the philosophy. Um, because we are uh, a commission and over time, I feel like people are gonna, <laughs> gonna come and go at some point in terms of either uh, um, whichever way we wanna think of this. I want to make sure this philosophy is for. Um, I don't know how we. I don't know if we put it into words or if it's just an understanding that it can evolve um, over time with the needs of the forest too. So whether that is just the um, way we write it, that it's inherently able to adapt to the conditions, because right now I feel like carbon sequestration putting as much carbon in the ground is super important. But if we're still around in a hundred years, uh, yeah, I understand that. being able to adapt to whatever situation we need, need to be. Have at it. I'm, I'm gonna, that, putting that out there for any other, spark any other thoughts. And, and fortunately, if, you know, some future um, commission members you know, look around and say, well, the world has changed. Let's, let's change our philosophy. I, I hope. I, like, yeah, all right. I just want them to know they can do that. <laughs> all right. All right. Anything else? Um, yeah, I think I just mentioned as a piece of information, I forget where I read it mm -hmm. or saw it, but an environmental group that's interested in climate change uh, it's recommending that you use wood instead of uh, steel and concrete in commercial mm. buildings. Mm. Mm. No, I've, I've, card. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that too somewhere. I feel like I've heard that. If you find if you was find recent. where you heard that, oh. I, I get the New York Times. Mm -hmm. It might be in there. Yeah, I'll have to do a search. Please, please yeah, share it. I was very surprised, to be, be honest. Mm -hmm. so, but apparently, uh, there's a lot more problems caused by making steel and concrete than there mm -hmm. is by using, cutting down a tree and then replanting it. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of energy in concrete. Yeah, and steel, of course. And yeah. steel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. No, please, please pass that along if you come across it again. Yeah, that'd be great. I should have saved it. All right. With that being said, um, not hearing anything else, um, I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Do I have a second? Oh, we need to uh, oh. set the, the next meeting. Oh, oh great. next meeting. Which someone has their calendar out. Yeah, would be Monday. December 5th. December 5th. The 5th. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. December 5th, um, I'll be looking to hear about Mr. Florek. Um, other than that, I'm sure we'll have something to talk about. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to the motion. All right. Motion uh, to close the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.